What's up, Mustangs? It's Miss Hibbard coming at you with your HR diagram notes. You'll be watching this presentation and filling in your Cornell notes sheet as you go. Let's start with what is an HR diagram. Well, you're looking at a picture of one right now. HR stands for Hertzsprung Russell Diagram, and it's named after the two scientists that created it. Um, one is Einhar Hertzsprung, who's Danish, and the other is Henry Norris Russell, who's American. They came together to create this diagram. What it does is it plots every star on a graph and measures the star's brightness, also called luminosity, against its temperature, which will align with its color. Go ahead and pause the video right now to write down what an HR diagram is and maybe sketch out a very simple one. All right, so if you look at the x-axis, you will see that we are measuring temperature. And there's a little K next to it, and that means that temperature is measured in Kelvin. Kelvin is a temperature scale that has no negative numbers. It starts at zero, also called absolute zero, and it's uh, used by scientists across the world. The color of the stars will also change depending on the temperature. The coolest stars are red and the hottest stars are blue. And that is a little bit different than what you might think of. A lot of times we think of blue as cold. But if you think about a flame, the middle of the flame, which is the hottest part, is that blue color. And the edges of the flame are the orange and red. And those are cooler. Now, something that's very different about that x-axis, maybe you noticed it, is the higher numbers are over here on the left and the lower numbers are over here on the right. So temperature increases from right to left, and that's different than probably any other graph you've ever seen. The hotter stars are on the left and the cooler stars are on the right. And you might see cooler is in quotation marks because even the coolest stars are still very hot at 2,500 degrees Kelvin. Sorry, you don't actually say degrees, you just say 2,500 Kelvin. Uh, just to give you an idea, 2,500 Kelvin is about 4,400 degrees Fahrenheit, so very hot. But please make sure you stop in your notes and make a note of this difference in the x-axis. All right, if we look at the y-axis, you'll see that it's labeled luminosity and has a little L sun next to it, which I'll talk to you about briefly in a moment. Luminosity is the amount of energy a star emits, also known as the amount of light a star emits, because light is energy. It's sometimes referred to as brightness or magnitude. Um, the reason you see that L sun is because luminosity is measured in suns, like our sun in our solar system. So the one right in the middle of the y-axis, that's one of our sun. And so anything along this line is the same brightness as our sun. And here it's 10 to the second, which would be 100 times brighter than our sun anywhere along this line, 10,000 times brighter than our sun anywhere along this line, and 1 million times brighter than our sun anywhere along this line. And then below it, we've got things that are not as bright as our sun. So 1 one hundredth of our sun and 1 ten thousandth of our sun down here. All right, the last section we're gonna do is filling in that chart that you have on your notes. There's four main sections of stars that we're going to cover. The main sequence is this diagonal line of stars that I've got circled right here. And the main sequence is 90% of stars in the universe, including our sun. Um, it has stars of every color in it. And the hottest stars are going to be the brightest stars when it comes to the main sequence. That's not always the case for other stars, but in the main sequence, hotter stars are brighter, cooler stars are dimmer. And so in that case, they make a diagonal line from the top left to the bottom right of the HR diagram. So make sure you put the information of these bottom two bullets in your um, table. And if you want to include any other notes for yourself, that's fine as well. Our next group is the red giants, and I've got those circled. Red giants are dying stars. 
our sun will turn into a red giant. It will expand and engulf some of the inner planets, including Earth. But don't worry, that's over 5 billion years away. A red giant is going to be reddish or orange, and it's high luminosity, meaning it's very bright or fairly bright, and it's low temperature. You can see it's over here in the low temperature range. So fill in especially this last bullet, it's really important, and this bullet. It, they're in the middle right of the HR diagram. You can fill in your table right now. Our third group is the red supergiants. They are going to be quite cool stars, they're but they're very big, so that makes them very bright. And when I say they're big, I mean they're big in volume, not big in mass. You don't really have to know that, it's just kind of a fun fact. Um, they're going to be reddish orange, and like I said, they're very bright. And the reason that they're so bright is because they are so big. They are low in temperature. You're going to find them in the upper right corner of the HR diagram. All right, our last section of stars is the white dwarf down here in the corner. The white dwarf is a very small, very dense star about the size of a planet like Earth. Um, it happens at the very end of a star's life cycle. A low or medium mass star like our sun has used up all of its fuel. So our sun will end its life as a white dwarf. The color would be white, obviously. And it's just, um, not very bright, and that's because it's so small, but it is quite hot. You can see it's over here in the higher temperature range. So you're going to find these in the bottom left of the HR diagram. So make sure you have at least these two bullet points filled in. If you want to include any of this, it's more just kind of for your understanding. Okay, so just to wrap up, by the end of this, you should be able to interpret the HR diagram, mean, meaning understand the two axes and how to read them, and then use that to explain the different groups of the HR diagram. And that's all I've got for you.